is good everybody my paper moon fam it's your boy paper sin back with another reaction video this one is called why serial killers stop murdering people in prison well i'm gonna uh, well first off it's by the youtube channel the fugitive crime i'm gonna go off on a limb here and say well first things first Serial killers are stuck in prison with other serial killers or people who have high or, or people who have um, comparative crimes, right? I'm guessing. So mm, why would they want that fight? Why would they want that trouble? I mean, yeah, they could go off and try and kill somebody in their sleep. But like the other people are going to be alert and be like, oh, yo, we got to take care of that guy because he, he, you know, he's saying he's disrupting the, uh, the he, he disrupting the, uh, the rest of our prison's life because we don't know if he's going to try and go after us next. And two, um, serial killers usually have, their victims usually have something in common. So when they get put in prison, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's no one with that, unless, they're, unless their um, target was, was, was uh, people who commit crimes, was, unless their target was other criminals, then as soon as they get put in prison, this, it's like, well, they're, their usual target's not there, so there's no one to do attack. All right, but we're gonna watch this anyway and see what's good, see what's great, see what's going on. No hate. Maybe there's other information that I don't know that I'll be surprised about. Um, but yeah, let's check it out. Don't forget to do this. <laughs> don't forget, as always, the link to the channel and link to the video will both be in the description below. So be sure to check them out and let's see what. And don't forget to do those three things I like to ask you to do: like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell for more videos. Yeah. All right, let's get in it. Behind prison walls, serial killers rarely, if ever, kill again. Why is this the case? Is prison security so good that it can suppress some of the world's most ruthless killers? Or is it all about the chase? And once they're caught, their twisted little game is over. Let's take a look. Well, that could be true. Prison killers. It's important to point out that despite 24-hour surveillance, some serial killers do still manage to kill while behind bars. In Brazil, police officers were transporting two prisoners to a different building, both of which were handcuffed in the back. The police arrived at Sorry, forgot at their destination and noticed that one of them had been killed. The only surviving member was Pedro Rodriguez Filo, one of Brazil's most notorious serial killers. On a mm. podcast, he also mentioned another victim of his while in prison. No, I killed, you killed your father in jail? Similarly, Robert Maudsley was sent to Broadmoor Prison in England and somehow managed to capture a fellow prisoner and torture him for nine hours. All the while, he started bargaining with the prison staff. Ironically, when he was moved to a high security prison, he managed to stab two more prisoners to death. Since then, he's been locked up in a zoo-like cage and has been compared to Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs. What but these the two fuck? killers are exceptions. Most serial killers will not add to their body count while behind bars, and there are multiple factors as to why. The hunter becomes the prey. When serial killers first set foot in their cells, they become celebrities. Some of them gain notoriety and respect, while others find themselves to be a target. When Gary Ridgway entered prison, everyone knew him as the Green River Killer, and he was responsible for the deaths of at least 48 people. So he simply wasn't allowed to mix with other prisoners. The Seattle Times God reported damn. that leaving him among the general population would have... 48 people? Like, this dude was, was busy. Shit been a virtual death sentence and attacking these serial killers is an easy way for other inmates to gain notoriety and fame too a regular inmate named carl hiltz one day noticed I mean, that he yeah. was receiving a lot of fan mail and donations from outside prison while reading the letters it soon became clear that he'd become a hero for punching paul bernardo one of mm. canada's most notorious serial killers hits clocked him so hard that bernardo almost lost an eye and a lot of people felt that this was a brutal but necessary form of justice mm. but for bernardo things could have been a lot lot worse one prison inmate named james L Elliot wanted to pay his debt. Hold up. I guess it makes sense too, because like, uh, let's say there was um, a serial killer, a, a, other, another serial killer that was in, in the same prison that has two serial killers in the one prison, right? One kills the other, but the one that got killed was someone who took out someone who was close to you or close to your family, close to your friends or something. And, uh, and so since they killed someone that was close to you, you're going to, you might write, you might feel obligated. Hey, just, just maybe not obligated, but you want, you might want to thank the person, the other serial killer, because they killed the person who killed your family member. You feel me? Or the person who's the other person who was close to you. you. So I get it. 
why they would st why I, there's obviously still reasons why they would still do it but let's check it let's wait until we see the reasons why they wouldn't why they stop get to society so he went into the cell of donald harvey a murderer of 87 people and beat him mercilessly God two days later damn. he was pronounced dead elliot told news outlets that killing harvey would enable him to do something constructive for the friends and neighbors he robbed and stole from and never gave anything in return somehow mm -hmm. i don't think he managed to convince the judge that this was community service and the most <laughs> notable example is jeffrey dahmer while dahmer was in prison oh, his shit. dark and disturbed sense of humor did not win him many friends he would rearrange his food to make it look like body parts and then squirt ketchup on them so when fellow inmate Christopher Scarver found himself alone with Dahmer in the gym, he oh, did not shit. waste his opportunity. The roles were reversed, and Jeffrey Dahmer found himself the victim as he was bludgeoned to death with a steel bar. Yeah, the dude was not about to let Dahmer get the, get the best of him. Like He was not about to let Dahmer like, walk up on him, sneak up on him while he's busy working out. You know what I'm saying? Hell no. Like, you, you honestly, if, yeah, that was probably a smart, sort of smart move. Like, you probably heard about what he did somehow, some way. And then as soon as that guy came at y'all y'all alone, you were like, oh hell no, nah, I ain't trying to uh-uh. It's either at this point, at that point, it's either him or Dahmer. You know? It's just like, all right, it's gonna be Dahmer. <laughs> Things get complicated. Perhaps the biggest and most obvious reason that serial killers stop when they reach prison is that it's a bit harder for them to kill others. They're under constant surveillance okay. with limited access to weapons. A lot of famous serial killers were simply kept away from other prisoners. Most of them, if not all, go to maximum security prisons. Mm. We mentioned how this was the fate of Gary Ridgway. Dennis Rader, who was known as the BTK killer, which stood for Bind, Torture, Kill, was also not allowed to mix with other inmates. Similarly, Ted Bundy was on death row for most of his time in jail and never really got time to interact with other prisoners. In mm. most cases, serial killers have preyed on women and are thrown in to all men's prisons. In the case of Ted Bundy, he solely focused on women and his motivation was heterosexual okay, desire. See, so he had no outlets in an all male prison. Yeah. During his time in prison. Yeah, see, so, so that part is what we already discussed in the beginning. They get there, their targets, their, their normal targets aren't there anymore. So it's like, I. No point in doing anything, just sit here and chill. Prison, he was free to roam and often went to the library to research his own case. That being Damn. said, John Wayne Gacy, whose target was young men, was allowed to carry tools across the prison and was even considered a bit of a handyman. What? According to UPI, he carried two putty knives, both sharpened, one three inches wide and the other six inches Why? wide. A two-page petition signed by 20 prisoners with a relatively reasonable request that one of the most notorious American serial killers should not be allowed to carry potential weapons around with yeah. They also charged that he enters the unit's visiting room at will. Without the handcuffs, other inmates must wear and often carrying a tool what? the reason why gacy couldn't kill in prison hold on, hold on, hold on. so he was able to walk around with tools and no handcuffs and he still didn't kill like other prisoners like in the wonder by the same time the wonder like other prisoners were like hold up hold up bro nah 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 son yeah yeah you got y'all gotta get this man nah take away his tools at least yo what i wasn't worried as fuck oh hell no was that everyone knew who he was. He could no longer lurk in the shadows. The deadly weapon of secrecy was no longer at his disposal. But sometimes, for these killers, prison ain't so bad. In 2012, the Gaston Gazette in North Carolina received a letter from Danny Robbie Hembury Jr., the convicted <clears throat> murderer of two women. In this letter, he started to inform the newspaper that he was living in the lap of luxury behind prison walls. He wrote, Is the public aware that I'm a gentleman of leisure, watching color TV in the AC, reading, taking naps at will, eating three well-balanced hot meals a day? And Damn. this was not a once-off either. Robert Blecker, a New York law school professor and advocate so that's kind of like yeah, yeah i'm in prison but shit it's good in here i ain't gotta worry about no taxes i ain't gotta worry about paying no bills i ain't gotta worry about dealing with no no fucking job i get free food i got a free place to sleep you know what i'm saying yeah. shit man no wonder they they just kind of gloated to the public it's like yo is the public aware that you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm chilling in here. I'm living good in here. I get it. I get it. Like, but damn for the death penalty told abc news they're playing on softball fields with line base paths and umpires in uniforms while other guys are hanging out getting a suntan those who committed the worst crimes who deserve to suffer the most generally suffer the least which begs the question are the prison services deliberately keeping these people sweet do they feel that providing serial killers with a better life makes them less likely to kill normally serial killers come from a place of anger where they want to get revenge against the world the prison guards might be working on the old saying that you catch more flies with honey than mm. with vinegar prison levels Often the privileges serial Hold that up. you catch more fly. Okay, never mind. For a second. No, is this is this the key and peel skit? Is this a clip from the key and peel skit where the guy kept like letting him out of prison? 
Oh, uh, hold on. Oh, uh, hold on. Hold on. Uh, is it? It almost looks like it. Hey. Oh, okay, okay. Flies with honey than with vinegar. Prison yeah, that was it. Come on, hold on. Saying that you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Yeah, this is key. This, that's Jordan Peele, isn't it? Vinegar. Hey, man. You gotta let me out of here. Oh, okay. Prison levels. Often, the privileges serial killers enjoy are something they have to earn through good behavior. And if they're immediately rewarded for good behavior, they're less likely to engage in bad behavior, which includes killing people. There is no cookie cutter prison system. There are different types of prisons and different privileges awarded based on each individual prisoner. Do you got some glass in my hat? In prison, it's likely that your everyday life from then on will get much worse. You'll be put into isolation and all your freedoms will be taken away. Serial killers are unlikely to be released from prison early, but they could move from a maximum to a medium security prison based on good behavior and be given greater privileges. In 2019, Canadian serial killer Cody Legabokov was moved from maximum security to medium, much to the outrage of the victim's family. The authorities did not say why, but it's likely that he wasn't causing many problems and was believed to be a lower risk than expected. The downfalls. But prison is no picnic either. One of the biggest myths about serial killers is that they want to get caught. While this is the case for some, Fair the enough. majority want to be free. According to the criminologist Scott A. Bone, they love the act of killing too much. Serial killers gain confidence, satisfaction, and are emboldened by their success, particularly during the early stages of their killing careers. They eventually get better as they go along and put meticulous amounts of detail into their workings. And the mistakes made usually come from being too cocky and confident rather than any desire to be behind bars. For a lot of serial killers, prison marks the end of the exciting double life they'd created. Mm. Fred West, Harold Shipman, Carl Denker, and countless others are all serial killers whose last murder was themselves. When the dust is settled Damn. and they finally had to face the music for their actions, they often end their own lives. They get older. As men and women get older, their testosterone levels decrease. Testosterone is a hormone that can produce anger, sexual desire, and strength, all of which are key attributes mm. for the perfect serial killer. According to the professor of psychology, James M. Dabbs Jr., prior studies have found higher levels of testosterone among persons who commit violent crimes than among those who commit non-violent crimes. While it would be foolish to say testosterone is the root cause of serial killers, some people assert that it can definitely be considered a small factor. If you get weaker and less angry as you get older, you then it stands to reason that the likelihood of you killing someone will also decrease. Yeah. There's no conclusive link between testosterone and serial killers. However, less than 1% of sexual homicides are caused by people over the age of 50. Being a serial killer is often a young man's game. And sometimes, okay. serial killers have finished killing even before they're caught. Dennis Rader, for instance, finished killing in 1991, but was not apprehended until 2005. Gary Ridgway did most of his killings in... He finished killing in, in 1991, 1991. But wasn't caught until 2005. So eventually, so he had to either like give up or like, hey, yo, by the way, I'm the one that did this. If you want to come and get me, you know what I'm saying? I'm chilling over here. Uh, uh, just to let you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, nah, I, ain't, I ain't aggressive or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Just put me in a nice spot. All right, cool. Bye. Like, like what? <laughs> until 2005. Gary Ridgway did most of his killings in 1982 and 1983, but it took the police 20 years to find God him. So the biggest damn. motivator of any- 20 years to 2002, 2002 or 2003? Before he got caught? Shit. Serial killer is what's going on in their mind. They get diagnosed. While serial killers should be held accountable for their actions, mental illness is also a factor. American mm. psychiatrist Jeffrey A. Lieberman was tasked with treating the serial killer David Berkowitz, who was known as the Son of Sam killer. Lieberman okay. was astounded by the effect that a few meds had on a brutal killer. When on medication, he was docile and rational. However, when he stopped his meds, as he did repeatedly, he came under the sway of his symptoms, auditory hallucinations, in which a dog's voice, he called it the Son of Sam, commanded him to kill mm. long-haired young women. As well as the drugs which were what? available, sometimes the drugs which were unavailable helped too. Jeffrey Dahmer was an alcoholic and used this drug to help him carry out his crimes and drug abuse is incredibly common among serial killers. Without these drugs, oh, they might also be less inclined to kill too. They have okay, reformed. makes sense. As we all know, it is difficult to take a serial killer on their word. If they solemnly swear that they're sorry for what they have done, then they might for once be telling the truth. Defense experts argued that like many other serial killers... I mean, no wonder it's hard to take that out of their words. Like, yeah, anybody could just... There's people, there's people that are good at acting. And that that aren't actors, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, sure, all right, bro. Mm -hmm. All right, they say they got they work. They say they they say they, you know what I'm saying? They, uh, uh, do we trust them?
And then they decide whether to let, let, them, go, let them go or reduce their sentence or whatever. And it's like, damn, man. And then that person might end up start going at going again. And then it's like, all right, we probably should keep him in jail. Killers. Shawcross suffered a toxic combination of physical and mental damage. Arthur Shawcross murdered two children in 1972 and was released from prison in 1987 for good behavior. So only 15 years? Murdered two children in 1972 and was released from prison in 1987 for good behavior. However, he ended up killing 12 more people upon release. There what are many the cases where See? serial killers have claimed to have been reformed, been released, and then murdered again. Masters of manipulation will inevitably use the same tactics when trying to get parole. There are some. See, I told you they they get out. They're good actors, or whatever. They get released for whatever reason, then they go back, go back at it, and get put back in jail. Like, yeah, you should probably keep him in jail this time. Durr. Some cases when the world's worst killers may have actually turned another page. Ted Bundy spent his last night in prison in tears, appealing to God. Carla Homolka, a notorious serial killer, is now a mother of three and living a pretty normal life. But the best example Damn. is the son of Sam killer, David Berkowitz. Once he was it can can the killer gene pass to, to, to your kids? Probably not, but just like imagine. Can it? Was diagnosed with schizophrenia, Berkowitz has also become a born-again Christian since his arrest and spends his days working as the prison chaplain. He also helps with more mundane tasks, such as cleaning and paperwork. For him, prison time has been a sobering experience. First of all, I want to be a good Christian because uh, I want to please the Lord, but it's my way of saying that I'm sorry for the things that happened in the past. Okay. I'm sorry for, uh, you know, being that... Murdered for... The the teen who murdered his neighbor for TikTok. That bad person. At the end of the day, prison is about punishing people for wrongdoings, but it is also about rehabilitation. Oh, that's maybe, another video. Never mind. Some serial killers are deeply sorry for their actions. Thank you so much for watching. Click on the videos you see in front of you for more content. I mean, that one's kind of interesting too. But like, okay, so we were we were part right. We we're half right. Like, I don't think he, I don't think we got, uh, at least they didn't mention the one about, you know, they're just in there with other serial killers. And so, oh, they kind of did in certain ways. But, because like with that one person that everybody that was allowed to walk around free with tools and no handcuffs, like everybody knew he, who he was, so he wasn't, he wasn't able to really do shit. So I guess that's kind of hitting the same, uh, the same board as, 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 um, you know, you're in there with other serial. Well, no, it's not. It's not. It's not the same. Because I, I said you're in there with other serial killers, and like, there's like, who's who? Why? Why would you try it? Because everybody else is gonna be like, try. Someone else is gonna come after you. Try after you to end you. We kind of hit it with Jeffrey John with Jeffrey Dahmer, but I don't know. Anyway, oops. <clears throat> anyway, we're kind of half right in this one, but. Yo, like there was a lot of different reasons I what that I didn't expect, and so I learned something new today. So, uh, and if you watch this all the way through, then you learned something new today. Congratulations, good stuff. But you know what it is after that. <laughs> you know what it is after that. In case I don't see you, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Peace and much love to you.